Now, few Americans know firsthand what life is like inside Afghanistan. Robert Young Pelton does. He traveled there for his book, The World's Most Dangerous Places, which tells us something about his experiences there. Mr. Pelton joins us this morning live from Los Angeles. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Good morning. Help, help the American people and our viewers around the world understand from your experiences inside the country. Assume there is some U.S. military campaign that ends up toppling the Taliban regime. Is there, indigenously within Afghanistan, a coalition that would be able to take power, in your view? Well, the problem with Afghanistan has always been that once there's peace, the warring factions break out. There, there was a period in the 70s when Afghanistan was doing fine, and uh, it descended into war after the Russians invaded. But even when the Russians left, there was a coalition of the same people, the same Northern Alliance that we're working with, that began warring on each other in Kabul. And tell us about the, the people themselves. Our coverage obviously focus on the Taliban, and we have seen coverage from our correspondents in northern Afghanistan of the Northern Alliance, the opposition. As you went through the country, sir, are people, are those the two sides, or do the everyday people, do they care about this fighting at all? No, Afghanistan has natural geographic and ethnic divisions. There are Hazaris, which are Shias in the uh, northwest. There are Tajiks in the north and the uh, northeast. You've got Pakhtuns, or Pashtuns, as they're called, in the south. Uh, the problem we're going to have is that it's fairly easy to militarily defeat the Taliban, but then what do you do after you've won the war? And you say this is one of your favorite places. You have been to 90 countries around the world chronicling your travels. You say this is one of your favorite. Explain what you mean by that. Well, the extraordinary thing about Afghanistan is they've been fighting two decades of war, and everywhere I went, I was welcomed into people's homes. They were very, very generous with me. Uh, they were very open to my ideas. They shared everything they had with me. And these are people who are just devastated by a number of natural calamities and, of course, man-made calamities. And the thing that I think that our soldiers and people who are over there now will find out that every Afghan welcomes outsiders if they come with an open hand. If, out, if those outsiders include armed U.S. troops, do you think there will be a welcome, sir? Well, they're not anti-American. I never found any anti-American sentiment amongst either the Talibs or the North. I think what they're against is just sort of uh, irrational attacks on their infrastructure in certain groups within inside the country. But the, Afghan the Afghans really would welcome the Americans to at least assist them, not to run their country, but to help them come out of this uh, two decades of warfare. And I see you say in your writings that I've reviewed here that you never saw Osama bin Laden, but you could tell when he or those close to him had been around. Explain. Yeah, I, well, I was in Jalalabad a couple of years ago, and I was just up the road from his farm at the, um, it's on the west side of town. And, uh, you know, I kind of compare him to Frank Sinatra. Everybody has seen him, but nobody's actually talked to him. He uh, travels in a, in a sort of a convoy with uh, red uh, land cruisers and white pickup trucks. And you can tell because he's surrounded by Arabs, and Arabs wear the keffiyeh, either black and white checked or red and checked, uh, red and black checked uh, headdresses. Robert Young Pelton, author of The World's Most Dangerous Places, we thank you for your thoughts today, sir, helping educate the American people about life inside Afghanistan. And now for more 